Friends, will you pray with me? And as you feel so comfortable and so moved, I invite you to join in the second time through. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O God. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O God. Amen. There is a particular loneliness that I have noticed when one is driving at night, particularly through more rural areas or small town areas, when it is dark outside and the lights are on in people's homes. It is a sort of sense of being outside, thinking perhaps that what is going on in is something of comfort, of home. I wondered sometimes in these drives through places like this looking in, I wonder about the people in these homes, about the lights that shine out the windows, who they are, would they be welcoming? What is going on in their worlds? Now, sometimes when we pass homes like this, we can get some sense of who the folks inside might be. Perhaps there is a yard sign or a flag outside that gives us a hint. Maybe we see inside through the windows a family gathered around the table sharing a meal, somebody sitting in an armchair with a book, or on the big screen TV, a football game, or a favorite show where we connect and say, oh yes, those are my people. When we are young as children, I'm not sure if it is particular to, uh, to our society or just something in us as human beings, but we have a tendency to try and conform ourselves to the groups around us. We see this often showing up in schools, right? We see, you know, kids who always want to have a particular brand of clothing or who all have wanted to watch the same TV show and say, oh yes, have you watched this? Yes, I have. And we play the games of this. And this continues on. You find this particularly in, happens, comes out in middle school as sort of adolescents start to at the same time try to have their own identity, they also want to make sure that they are accepted by those around them. And so perhaps parts of their identity sort of get put away and hidden. There is no sense of trying to find your people. Your people are the people around you, are the people perhaps who are popular and have lots of friends. And you sort of try to fit in. A few, I'm going to say a few, it's probably like 20 years ago now. <laughs> years ago, there was a movie, a film called Mean Girls. They came out, I'm not sure how many of you have seen it. Tina Fey, the uh, comedian and actress Tina Fey was the director. And it was all about a high school and the group of mean girls who kind of ruled the school. And one of the things that they did, they sort of did this um, as like a little interview and they interviewed some of the other girls in the school. And they said, oh, Regina George, and she's the the head honcho mean girl, you know, oh, when Regina George, you know, cut her hair, and so I cut my hair, and she did this, and so I did this. And there's a, there's a little sabotage by some of the side characters trying to go on, and they, like, cut her tank top during gym class, and she puts it on afterwards, and she's like, oh, well, that's fine. And then all of a sudden, the next scene, all the girls are walk in the hallway walking with their tank tops cut the same way. There is this sense of trying to conform now, if we're lucky, as we get older and mature, we start to let some of that go. We start to discover who we truly are outside of the groups around us, and we try to find our people. 
During the pandemic, there was a Facebook group of homeschoolers that was formed. And it was a group who, uh, who was formed basically so uh, for parents of homeschoolers who uh, were concerned about masking and, uh, and following CDC guidelines and who were also inclusive of LGBTQ families and children. Now you wouldn't think it would have to be a group specific group for this, but this was something that was missing and needed. And the motto of that group has been it has become, your people are here. And I just love that. And it makes me think of the church. And wouldn't it be nice if people walked in and were thought, my people are here. Now, of course, unfortunately, I think sometimes the church ends up being like those houses People passing in darkness see the house and they look in and they think, well, in there, in there, there's some coziness maybe, or in there, there's some hospitality, but I am on the outside and I don't know. I don't know if those people are my people. And churches sometimes tend to, to sort of act like the middle school Kids who just try to fit in and form and, and not stand out too much. Not pick a people to belong to or a group. And I think there's, there's some detriment in that. In that by not really letting our true light shine, the people who are looking for us, for our particular flavor, of spiritual practice can't find us. Now I know, of course, in the winter, physically actually opening our doors to the world is impossible, really. But metaphorically, we might want to find ways to let our light shine into the world shine into the darkness, let people know who we are. Of course, that means first knowing who we are, right? I wonder sometimes what Mary thought of these magi appearing at her door. Scholars are not quite in agreement about when the Magi showed up, but it was sometime between after the shepherds left and when Jesus was a toddler. You know, we have these wonderful scenes of shepherds and Magi, everybody sort of clumped together, that's our pageants, but that's not really how it happened. But still, here were these different people, these people from away, these scholars, these non-Jews who showed up at the door and worshipped this child as king in a way that perhaps as far as Mary and Joseph knew was, was something only contained to the people of Israel. It took some study on their part to know where this child was going to be. Again, we tend to have, not in this particular scene, but, but in most scenes and images, we have this bright, giant, humongous star shining over the stable. But if you think about it, if it were that clear, Herod would not have had to say, please tell me where the, I might find the child so I may go too. I actually was reading a commentary the other day that was written in the 70s, I think, and, uh, and they were saying, oh, well, you know, scientists don't really know what this star was or what it was, and I thought, oh, but they do now, or they think they do. And two years ago, in December, it was shining again, and I thought, but I, I didn't notice, I couldn't find it. I didn't know which one it was. It wasn't like all of a sudden we had a giant, you know, moon-sized star in the sky. They had to study. 
to do some learning, to listen. And I think that's something that we need to do too as individuals and as a church to take time for study and reflection, to be able to understand how we are being guided and how best to let our light shine. Clearly, if God had chosen this symbol, this star, as the guiding light, then God knew who would understand it, who would be able to interpret it, who would be guided by its light. So I think we need to consider who is out there in the darkness, who is wandering around seeking a spiritual community, a sense of home and place, a space for questions and doubts. And then figure out how we can shine a light to guide them to us. Because we have something wonderful and special here. Something that perhaps can be seen a bit shining through the windows, but with a little more brightness, a little more intention. Maybe, maybe not a flat screen TV broadcasting the World Cup through the windows, but some sort of sign that says people can see. And I think, I think the pride flag we have in here is one one little light shining that people look and say, oh, those are my people. There's one note that when we, when we have signs like that, we just need to remember, because there is a tendency sometimes to think that if we have signs that say, we welcome these people, it means that other people are not welcome. You know, if we have something that says, we welcome people from the LGBTQ community, some people might say, oh, does that mean straight people are not welcome? No, that's not what that means. It just means them too. You also. Letting our light shine into the world. Our flag. Our YouTube videos, which apparently are reaching South Africa. Other ways. Just conversations with people. Because people know you. And if they know you, and they trust you, and they say, oh, you go to that church? Huh. I had someone last night, actually, uh, a parent who's in our 4-H group with us. Um, we had the Noel on Norway concert, which had been rescheduled from, from December. And, and I stood up and introduced myself and welcomed everyone into this, into this space in this place. And afterwards, because they had, they had a child in the junior men's group too, and they said, I didn't know you were the pastor of this church. And I thought, huh, guess I was lacking in that information. I said, that's new. But I also thought to myself, huh, the little, the little click I saw in their head that said, oh, interesting. We know you. And you're connected with this church. That tells us something about this church. Let your light shine. Find your people and let other people know where their people are to be found. Let it shine and there will be multitudes, perhaps multitudes of camels following, coming Coming to, our, coming to our door. <laughs> Maybe next year for the uh, journey to Bethlehem. We'll get a camel. <laughs> Letting our light shine. Letting people know your people are here. And you are welcome to come as you are. No having to fit in or conform. But you are welcome here. Amen.